Hi, Tracy here with BibleJourneyMinistries.com and in this video you're going to learn how to transfer an image using basically tissue paper that you used for gift wrapping. I am using the one, the image from our Momentum devotional this month. I will link that below. And don't forget to get your free beginners course also linked below. So if you're ready to dive deep and have some fun creating beautiful, beautiful Bible journaling that's really simple and easy to do, let's go ahead and get started. All right, you are going to need a piece of copy paper, some repositional dots or tape if you have that. You're gonna need some tissue paper. This is just regular gift wrap tissue paper cut to the size of the, your copy paper. So your copy paper, your copier, your copier paper is going to be your carrier paper. So it's gonna be the one that carries your tissue paper through the printer. So you're gonna need your copy paper, some tissue paper, some repositional tape. You are also gonna need a printable. The printable that I'm gonna be using is from our devotional this month in Momentum titled Freedom. Our devotional is part of our Momentum series that offers digital Bible journaling kits and um, basically everything you need digi digitally every month to really dive deep and grow in the word creatively. So we have devotionals, we have printouts, we have kits, we have all kinds of things, traveler's notebooks, et cetera, et cetera, lots of things in Momentum. Plus, you get at least 10 videos every month with techniques and devotional content. So it's just a lot of fun. I'm printing mine on tissue paper. So just the cover of our devotional this month is what I'm gonna use in this technique. So I'll be printing this on tissue paper. So you just need your printable, whatever it is that you're going to use. You're gonna need clear gesso. I have my Dina Wakely clear gesso, which is my favorite. And you're gonna be using matte medium if you have it. Or if you don't have it, use clear gesso. It's totally okay. Matte medium is just my favorite, my preferred method. And then um, I will probably use some of this really pretty washi tape that I got from Hobby Lobby. It just has some really pretty flowers in it that I think match very nice with our Freedom uh, picture today. So I'm gonna be using that. You're gonna need maybe a heat tool if you're impatient like me and you like to dry between layers and um, some scissors, of course. So to get started, we are gonna be in John chapter eight and we are in verse 31 where it says, and Jesus said to the Jews who had believed them, if you continue in my word, you really are my disciples. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. I just love that verse. And we actually do use this section in our devotional this month. So it's just, I'm just continuing to go beyond the devotional and use our kits and our materials to just continue to be in the Word as much as possible. I think when you're in the Word, you grow in the Word, you grow in a relationship with God, and you just experience so much joy and peace. I just love it. So I do it, and I make a daily practice to get into the Word, and as much as I can to Bible journal, as much as I can, because it's just so fun. So before I get started, I wanna prep my page. So I need to prep the page that is gonna go into my printer. The printer that I use is called an HP Envy, and I will link up to a blog post that shows you how I do this. I show you exactly how I feed the paper into the printer so that you can see everything that I do. Of course, your printer is gonna be different probably going to be different than mine. So just experiment and have lots of fun. Don't get frustrated with it because sometimes um, just listen to the tech, the tips I give you in here and, and maybe you won't have any problems. But sometimes if you don't prep your page correctly, uh, it, your printer won't accept the paper and sometimes you have to spend time digging it out of the printer, which is just not fun. So the first thing I do is I take my repositional dots and I just put a line of repositional dots on the edge of my page all the way at the top. It's okay if I go over the page and onto my craft mat because I can just wipe those dots away later. And then what I do is I take my tissue paper that is cut to size. My tissue paper either, either is gonna be two size of this carrier paper or it's gonna be smaller than it. It can't be bigger. If it's bigger, it's gonna catch in the printer so you don't want that to happen. So I'm just gonna place my, my tissue paper on my page where I like to have it. Now I use repositional dots because I like to, oops, I use repositional dots 
because I like to be able to reuse my pages multiple times. And then when I pull up my print, when it's done through the printer, I don't want to rip it. So that's why I use re repositional dots. If you don't have repositional dots, you can use tape. You just might accidentally tear the tissue paper. So it's just use what you have. You don't have to go to the store and get repositional tots for this technique, but just realize that as you pull that tissue paper off of the page, it might accidentally rip. So the repositional dots help with that. When I put mine, um, when I, once I place my paper, my tissue paper down onto the page, what I typically do is I will remove any excess repositional dot because I don't want the repositional dot gumming up my printer. So I'll come in here and remove those and then I'll trim off anything that's peeking out from the edge of the paper. So any of that tissue paper that's peeking out from the edge of the paper I want to remove because if I don't remove it it's probably going to catch in the printer and I'm going to end up with a mess to clean up and try to get out of my printer. Now you want your tissue paper to be smooth. Obviously here I have some I have some bends in it, uh, some crinkles. Now it's at the end so likely when I feed this through my printer I'm going to be printing here and this part here is going to not come out well. The ink, it will probably fold or something and the ink will not disperse correctly onto the piece of paper. So if that concerns you, you can take some repositional dots, put it at the bottom of your page and just tape it down as smooth as you can. I normally don't do this part because I usually will throw away the end of it anyway so I just, I usually don't um, tape mine down, but you're welcome to tape yours down. Uh, I usually just tape the top of it. So once I'm done taping it all down, and I look to see, okay, what, what do I have now? So I have some tissue paper that wasn't cut very clean here on the side. So as long as my image that I'm going to be printing on doesn't extend past the tissue paper, I'll be fine. If it does extend past the tissue paper, then I need to go get another piece of tissue paper. <laughs> so you want to print on the tissue paper, not on the copy paper. So this is fine for what I'm for what I would need for this particular one anyway. So it's it's fine, but you um, you have to make sure that your tissue paper is within the frame of your carrier paper or your copy paper, okay? So once your tissue paper is framed exactly how you want it and there's nothing peeking out from the sides, you're gonna feed it in through your printer and copy your image. So when I did mine, I got this image and you can see that I actually have a ripped page. The reason why I had a ripped page is because when I placed this down on my paper, this part was sticking out a little bit when like I told you, I don't usually tape the bottom. So when I put this in my printer, this part was sticking out a little bit and it caught in the printer. So you can see that, that it was a little bit ripped. Again, if you, this is, you know, use your printer at your own risk. <laughs> I don't um, know uh, about your printer. And so if that's something that is concerning to you, then you might want to skip over this technique. But um, it came out just fine and I just have my image exactly how I want it. Now, what I could do now is just, just kind of tear around the edge of the image that I want to place down. So I can just come here and just use my finger as a guide. You can also use a ruler if you want to. And then just tear off, you know, where I want, where I, where I don't, all the excess. I'm going to tear off all the excess. Any, anything that I don't want to lay down on my my Bible page. So I'm just going to pull off anything that I don't want. And I can always come in with scissors to clean off any remaining edges. I like to, I prefer to tear my tissue paper because I like the edges, uh, the edging that it gives as opposed to a sharp line. So I prefer to tear my tissue paper as opposed to cutting it with scissors. But there are sections sometimes that I feel more comfortable cutting with scissors and I'll go ahead and do that in just a minute. So once I'm done tearing my tissue paper, and if I accidentally tear into a flower, that's okay. I usually, you can always just place it back down once you start doing the tissue paper technique. Um, so then I just tear off the stuff that I don't want with my fingers. And anything that I'm afraid I might get too close to the graphic, I'm just gonna come in with some scissors 
and trim that off. Like for example, I don't want to rip that whole flower, so I'm just going to come in here and trim off the edge of the black the black mark, which was the title. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to move that aside. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Bible, and I love to underline the verse first. So I'll come in here and I'll underline the verse just to make sure that I know where it is. And again, by underlining the verse, I just continue to think about the verse. So it's hard not to, to really, you know, continue to be in the presence of our Lord and continue to understand the word and learn it. If you're, it's hard not to do that when you're continuing, continuing to read it. So it's just kind of, it's just a great way to grow in the word and I just love it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and underline this verse. It's what I love to do. Uh, you don't have to, but I, I do. Um, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So I know where the verse is, um, and then I can look at my placement. So where do I want to place my little image? So I'm thinking my image goes here. Just here across the top. I just love that. And am I going to cover the words? Yeah, I'm going to cover the words, but it's we'll see how that turns out. A lot of times you can still read the words through the tissue paper, but at the end of the day, guys, I have... To date, I have 64 Bibles, so don't worry about my ability uh, to read the Bible. I have plenty of Bibles. <laughs> I collect them. I love them. Um, some Bibles are for Bible journaling. Some Bibles I use to study. Uh, it just I use them all the time. Okay, so at this point, once you're ready to apply your tissue paper, you are going to do two coats of gesso. So one coat of gesso, let it dry. Second coat of gesso, let it dry. I am not going to use gesso in this tutorial because I'm curious to know how bad the bleed through is going to be with this. Remember, this is just printer ink being carried by a piece of thin, light tissue paper. So this is basically a bunch of ink. <laughs> so I'm curious to know how bad this bleed through is going to be, if at all, in this Bible. And this Bible is my illustrating Bible, and it has thicker pages. So I'm just curious as to whether or not it's going to really bleed through or not. Now, again, for your Bible, if you don't want bleed through, two coats of clear gesso. One coat, then dry it. Second coat, then dry it. For this video, I'm curious about bleed through. I'm not going to prep the page. All right. Let's go ahead and do the next step. So once you have two coats of gesso and they're dry, you want to do a third coat of gesso and that will basically adhere the um, beautiful beautiful um, paper to your page. So that's what this that's what that third coat of gesso does. So I'm going to take my clear gesso. This is Dina Wakeley's clear gesso. It's my favorite type of gesso. And I'm going to go ahead and just put it on my page. Now remember, I'm going to say this one last time and I won't say it again. This would be your third coat of gesso, not your first. It's my first because I want to see if this is going to bleed through and how bad it's going to be in this illustrating Bible. One of the things we do at our ministry is test. We do a lot of testing um, of materials, of different types of techniques, because I would rather test on my many Bibles and tell you what I found as opposed to you maybe messing up if, if you only have, let's say, one Bible. I would rather try to error on my side and spend our resources um, to find out what works and what doesn't work as opposed to you using maybe your only Bible. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just I placed my tissue paper down, okay, and now I'm just going to quickly smooth it out from the center out, okay. And you want to be careful because if you accidentally um, put it down and it's um, it's bent <laughs> or it's crinkled, then you have to figure out how to smooth it out. It's a little bit harder. Now, does it mean that your page doesn't look good? No, it still will look good, but you might have like a little off on, on the color. You might accidentally have some some color that you don't want. You Because what happens is if I don't place this down exactly correct, then um, 
and there's like let's say a little bit that doesn't have gesso on it then the words are going to be a little bit lighter coming through the through the actual image if that makes sense because there will be a pocket that doesn't have anything on it <laughs> so um, as long as you have a clear a nice coat of gesso and then you place it down and then sm smooth it from the center outwards now don't be rough with your smoothing if you're rough with your smoothing you're going to rip the page and then you have to start all over okay so this looks pretty good. I'm happy where it is. Um, so my next step is to apply my first coat of matte medium. And I do my first coat of matte medium while my gesso is still wet. <clears throat> I don't dry it. You can, I don't. Um, because I like to make sure that if any of the page is not, doesn't have glue on it, that the matte medium will then carry the glue into that page to further adhere it down. Um, but again, it's preference, so do what you like. <laughs> okay, so this was a brand new bottle of matte medium, which is cool. Now, when you apply your matte medium, do not put your matte medium on your image. If you put your matte medium on your image, or your gesso, if you're using gesso on your image, you're going to disperse color, and you don't want to disperse color this way. You want to, What we're doing is just trying to make sure the glue gets put in there, uh, because this, this is not permanent ink. This is inkjet printer ink. So, I'm going to take my matte medium, I'm going to start at the light parts, the light parts of this image, because if I start at the red parts of the image or the darker parts of the image, the ink may bleed. So I'm just going to start at the light part and just start applying a thin layer of matte medium. And I'm just lightly, lightly going over the image. And you can see some, some of that ink start to move. You can even see it at the on the edge of my makeup brush. So what I typically will do is I'll grab a piece of paper and I'll just wipe it off. Okay, So I'm not dispersing the color. And then again I'll just be in here with my matte medium almost like I'm painting. Um, you can use a brush as well, a uh, paintbrush if you would like to. Now the reason why I start with the light colors first and then I come out into the dark colors is because if you do it the opposite way you do dark colors first then you're going to do the dark colors on top of the light colors and then you're going to mix colors where you don't want colors to mix <laughs> so by doing this way and just wiping off any excess ink that's coming up I can be sure that my light stays light. You can even start to see I accidentally pulled some off onto the white part. So to do the white part, I might come in with a clean sponge, makeup sponge, and then just do the white part next. And that way, I'm not dispersing too much of that ink that is on this tissue paper. Okay, because again, like I said earlier, this tissue paper is just carrying the ink Ooh, my air conditioner is coming on now. So awesome. It's hot in Phoenix, so I love the air conditioner. Okay, so I've done almost all of the white. I'm going to come in here and now do the black and hopefully not spread those letters apart. And I can do um, a little pat motion as opposed to a swipe in that. Okay, so I'm pretty happy. I think I got all of the image down. Now I'm gonna do my first drawing. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna just take my, my Darice heat tool and just dry out the page and I'll come right back. It will do probably one more layer of matte medium. Things are looking pretty good on this page so now I'm going to do my second coat of matte medium now remember this has a little bit of that paint on it so I need to not use this part so I can come in with my scissors and just clip off the top of this sponge and continue to use it again so I'm going to go ahead and put some matte medium down I'm going to swipe it across the entire page this time from left to right to get a nice smooth I don't know if there's any lines <laughs> that they'll be smooth and going in one direction instead of all over the place. Now I should not be picking up ink at this point because I have a layer of matte medium down. So really this is just 
a final stage. It looks like I'm picking up a little bit of color. So now I just need to be real careful. So if I start to pick up color and start to move color, then I'm going to be really a little more careful. But I shouldn't be getting too much of that because I already put one layer down and it's dry. So we should be fine. If you do see that you're getting a, some swipes, then you're going to um, just be be careful. Make sure that you're wiping off your makeup sponge. Okay. So and I usually do just one swipe swipes because I like evenness. I like to see like if I have any kind of uh, lines that they're all kind of going in the same direction. Uh, but you don't have to. You can come in as well and do the same thing I did earlier, which is do light colors first and red colors later or light colors first and then dark colors second and do the same thing. I just prefer to do it all the same. It's just my technique. It's just the way I do it, but feel free to modify it however it works for you. I'm going to come in here and dry it up. I'm going to add some washi tape to this and then we're going to call it done. So let me finish that up for you. Okay, I'm back and I just, all I did was I added some extra washi tape on the edges just to kind of frame it up a little bit. I just thought it looked really nice, so I enjoyed doing that part. And the only other thing that I can think of doing that would be helpful for me um, is just to really just call attention, more attention, to this whole section here. And I actually, I know it sounds really surprising, can actually read the words through all of this color. So. It's awesome. I'm, again, I'm not, I, it doesn't bother me to cover the words, but I know that it does bother some people, um, and that's okay. Like, just do what you're called to do. So I'm just calling a little more attention to this. I might come in over this as well and just draw a nice little box around this so I can show myself and maybe others in the future, maybe what I was really focused on. And then, of course, I could always come and take some time to really just outline my thoughts. I might come in here and do a little work here um, as well, but that might be for a later time. So <laughs> um, you have the technique. You know how to do this now. Um, in terms of bleed through on the back of this, you know what? Hardly any. This Bible is amazing in terms of the thickness of the pages. Um, I see just a little, and I'll try to get it on the camera so you can see. There's just a little, little tiny bleed through, but normally something like this where it has printer ink in it and, and uh, with a page that is not prepped or prepped incorrectly, you will normally see just like a ton of bleed through on the side. So loving the Illustrated Bible for that reason and for many other reasons. Of course, I have videos on the Illustrating Bible if you're interested in learning more about this Bible. Um, but in general, I think this was an excellent project to do and really helped me dive deeper into the Word and really just worship God during this time. So if you have questions, please leave them in the comments and you have a wonderful day. Goodbye!